Very early in the morning here. <laughs> I got I know. up at 40. Yes, I know, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the other side of, on the other side of the world, actually. <laughs> yes. But, uh, I think you got some sleep. Who told you to come? Okay. Uh, the, am I visible? Yes, you are. Okay. Home okay. Hmm. Well, um, welcome all. Uh, we shall uh, start our program. Uh, to everyone here in Northeast India, and outside okay. India, a very warm greetings. Uh, I want to inform that today is uh, the day where the biggest traditional <laughs> festival of one of the indigenous tribe, Liang Mai, is uh, being celebrated. It is called Tsgangi. Uh, it is a festival to mark the bountiful harvest of the year in an agrarian society. And also uh, it, uh, it marks as a preparation for a new beginning. I want to, uh, I want to uh, greet all of you. I, I want to uh, say, I want to wish the joy and the peace and the blessing of the Tsagangi be upon you all. I welcome everyone who is participating here in the room or on the YouTube from Nagaland, Manipur, Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Sikkim, and Arunachal Pradesh, and from across India and outside India. Uh, I want to inform that today in today's meeting, we have a mixed uh, audience from, uh, various, from the various fields like uh, linguistics, anthropology, and also laymen. I want to take your kind permission for a few uh, seconds to switch to one of the uh, tribal languages called Liang Mai as a symbol uh, to, to give space to even minority language. Um, welcome special talk this is Louis the Sai, a new price distribution uh, session has been made. To why say in this lamp and switch to high plan day, Miramide, in this to Zengasu, Nalumni Mohaketolo. Today, we uh, virtually gather here to raise awareness on our beautiful culture, to share experience, and to express care and love for our indigenous culture, language, folk songs, and so on. In today's slide, uh, it is true and essential to acknowledge, practice, and understand the culture of others. But it should never be done. It should never be shown at the cost of our language, our culture. To share the importance of all this um, and discuss more on this, we are so privileged to have the champion of minority languages and its culture. Uh, she is none other than my own teacher, our social scientist, Professor Anbita Abi. 
I will be back to introduce her father and also give her to take over the time in a short while. But as you know, uh, as you all know, um, we are also here today to witness the result declaration and the report of the second Liang Mai Folk Song Competition. I want to highlight that today we shall first listen to our invited speaker on the title, Save Your Language, Save Your Oral Tradition and stay away from cultural amnesia. Once the talk is, once the talk is over, we shall have a Q, Q and A hour and also discussion time for about 15 minutes. And secondly, we <laughs> shall move on with the second session of Christ Declaration to be led by uh, Ms. Florence Numai. Why Liang Mai Folk Song Competition? Uh, as we are all aware, as you are all aware, it's passing day. Literally, is passing day, our cultural uh, heritage, our folk songs, our folk tales are disappearing with the passing of time. And uh, in order to preserve whatever we can, in order to save it, in order to document, document whatever, whatever we can, we uh, come <clears> out <throat> with the idea of uh, gathering all the songs from the Liang Mai villages. And for this, we conducted Liang Mai song competition in 2020. This, this year, we also continued the same uh, competition. And we had, uh, this year, we got a massive response. 59 people participated in the competitions. The results and other details will be seen later in the program. All our videos and the songs, those songs are available in, the, in our YouTube. Uh, in our YouTube channel called Liang Mai Foundation. Now, uh, uh, let me please uh, take a few, uh, a couple of minutes to introduce our uh, speaker today. Um, I would like to, uh, I, I am very sure many of you will be aware of uh, Professor uh, Anvita Abi, but for the benefit of uh, those who are not uh, aware of her or maybe interested to know her, let me kind uh, let me spend a couple of minutes to uh, highlight uh, about little bit about her. Um, <clears throat> today's speaker is a very eminent linguist of international uh, stature uh, and also a very uh, a, a, a social scientist of uh, um, social scientist. Um, she had taught for 38 years in JNU, and I was so privileged to be uh, one of her students. Um, she is responsible for the six language family in India. Earlier, we have uh, five language families in India. Now we have six language families. Due to her long research, starting from early 2000, she uh, identified uh, the sixth language family uh, in India, and that is the Great Andamanese language family. She had carried out uh, uh, first-hand research from all over India, all across India, from Himalayas to uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Her work on tribal languages and minority languages in India and South Asia uh, are exemplary because of her outstanding lifetime uh, contribution to the con uh, documentation and uh, description of minority languages, uh, she got so many uh, uh, awards. Um, they, uh, some of them are uh, Basa, Basa Saman, Saman 2003, Leber, Leber Hume Professorship at the University of London Award 2011, Patma Shri, the president of, uh, by the president of India, and also Kenneth uh, Hell Award 2015 by Linguistic Society of America. I want to uh, particularly uh, thank our speaker today when I contacted her for the first time. Um, by the way, she is now uh, attending this program from uh, Seattle, Washington, USA, and it is uh, 4.50 a.m. in the morning. <coughs> they had to wake up so early this uh, morning. When I contacted her uh, around two months ago, um, 
see uh, say it without any uh, uh, without any uh, any uh, hesitation despite of her heavy engagement she said how can i refuse to not participate in the, your uh, in the tribal uh, program where uh, the purpose is for language uh, documentation for the preservation of the indigenous culture and all and uh, we are so uh, overwhelmed and so happy to have in our small uh, group today I am so grateful and we are all thankful to our uh, speaker uh, today. Now, um, I want to say uh, Liang Mai Foundation is a research group, tribal research group, a small research group. And on behalf of the uh, Liang Mai Foundation, I want to once again, welcome our speaker and also everybody here. Now, without any uh, further ado, I would like to invite our uh, speaker today to please, uh, Take your time. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Dr. Vicham Dinbo. It's my privilege to be connected to uh, all of you on such an auspicious day of, as you call, Sangangi. And I, my greetings are to all of you, all the people who are from the neighboring villages who have come to attend this. I wish we could have met in person but not uh, in this pandemic, that cannot be possible. And I'm also away, as you mentioned, I'm on the other side of the globe right now. Perhaps this is the best way to connect to you. I'm so honored to be one of the part of this auspicious occasion. And also uh, more, more because uh, I have uh, always loved working on in that area, especially the you would be happy to know that my career started with the field work in Shillong. And that was 1977. And we were the first ones to identify some unique sounds of this language, as well as further on the expressive morphology on which I wrote a lot later. So this is one area where, which attracted me right when I was very young. And then I pursued, as you, Wicham knows, uh, on Tibetan Burman languages, not all do you have such a diversity and variety. It's an appalling and very heartening. So I feel really doubly privileged to be uh, part of this uh, gathering of young people, the singers, the folk dancers. What is better than you know be among the people who love their art and culture of the community? My gr greetings to Mao tribe, the Pumai, Rongmei, Zima, Angami, Metei, Liangmai, and many others who are here. I cannot see you all, but I'm sure you can see me. And <clears throat> this is a very, uh, very opportune moment for me also to know that there you have selected some singers for today's competition. So here I will uh, begin with, as, uh, as you have noted, that, uh, and as Vicham also introduced you to, that I'm going to promote and uh, try to convince you that you stick on to your language. The, it's a, I know English is a very attractive language. Hindi is very attractive language because these are the two languages that connects you to the world. Hindi to the rest of India and English to the intellectual or the educated India as well as outside the world. But, you must know that mother tongue is, is not merely an experience in life, you see. It is, it's more than that. It is the vehicle of our cognition, our worldly experience, and most important, our instrument to shape our brain structure. Those who are in neurolinguistics or neurology, they would know this, yes, brain structure also gets formed and formulated by the kind of tongue or the kind of mother language that you speak. So it's not just an experience, it's more than that. So please always remember that you have to maintain your mother tongue. The, there is always attraction of a dominant language. For example, in our days, in our country, the English is the dominant language medium. Uh, but this dominant language medium is not good for children in the early stages of their lives. It is because it curtails the development of their capabilities and perpetuates poverty. And this is the view held by 
Amartya Sen, the Nobel laureate, that if you if the dominant uh, language will be the one which will not be the uh, mother tongue, but some other language in the early stages of school. Yes, it does it perpetuate poverty. And I'll tell you why. Because mother tongues brings in solidarity. It brings in brotherhood among the groups based on understanding, tolerance, dialogue, and so on and so forth. So this kind of bonding that you develop while speaking mother tongue cannot be achieved if you're speaking or if you're forced to speak the other tongue, which is not your own. So non-mother tongue teaching actually robs the basic pleasure of sharing your thoughts and beliefs among the very peer groups and friends who are close to you. So you are a, right in the childhood or in the very early childhood, you are taken away from this kind of a pleasure if you, if you concentrate only on the mother tongue, uh, like only on the non-mother tongue education. We did some study in the rural areas and we realized that there was a lot, very high push out rates, drop out rates from the rural school children. And the reason was being identified by the NCRT was because children were made to learn in language which was not their home language. And that's why children could not relate to the content and also the context. So they started dropping out from the school. So unless we relate our subject, to the kids, children's home language, we will not be able to succeed uh, in our goal of giving them education. Uh, <clears throat> you know, my experience is that non-mother tongue education in the very early stages turns children into translators. And that also a very bad translator, very poor translator. So rather than teaching them something new concept, or rather than something to relate what they already know. Because don't forget, when the child comes to school, he already has a large uh, verbal, verbal repertoire. He has a good lexicon of his language. And he also understands the natural phenomena around his world. But when he comes to school and you start teaching in an alien language, he has to relearn many things and unlearn many other things. And this process of unlearning and relearning is so tedious that he sometimes loses the capability of perception, which he already has. And eventually, in, as in a short time, I'll give you some examples from the languages of your area where if you, if you don't speak your language, you lose these perceptive and the cognitive abilities ultimately. Be the mother tongue education in the early stages definitely raises the quality of education. And uh, I don't have to say this, you have many examples around the globe, whether it's China or Japan or you know, other countries where the progress has been made tremendously. And it is also because of the fact that the children don't have to unlearn anything when they go to school. So the question is, when you are talking of understanding and when you are talking about creativity, that the, these two aspects of inner child then you must adhere to the uh, adhere to the uh, embel, the preamble that you have to teach child in the home language, whatever the home language is. And most of the time, I do not know about your area, but most of the time I've observed when a child comes to school, he's already bilingual, uh, bilingual in his home language and the language of, of his friends or somebody. So I'm not against English. After all, I'm also speaking in English to you. What all I'm saying is that you have to you have to make it your education in such a way that the child grows up to be a multilingual or a bilingual. You do teach child the language English, but not from the very beginning. You teach by and by gradually. I think the child should teach be taught English from the class fifth. And I have a formula worked on it, but I can speak about it some other time. I've written about it. And it works very well because it has been tried out by the NCRT in some regions. So feel, pre feel proud to speak, to read, and write in your language. So this is a very important aspect that I wanted to begin with because I'm not against English. I'm not against Hindi. I'm just saying that you start education and giving children the knowledge about the world in his mother tongue and then move on to the other languages so that he becomes out 
to be a bilingual and multilingual person. I wanted to say this because I was uh, told by the organizers there is some confusion and there were some apprehensions about the, these aspects. So I thought I will begin with this. And here I will now uh, um, uh, start with my, uh, uh, the talk that uh, I promised to give you. And let me see, I'm sharing my screen and uh, the, uh, wait. Okay, so this is the, as Vicham announced uh, in the beginning, this is the topic of my today's talk, Save Your Oral Tradition and Stay Away from Cultural Amnesia. Uh, <clears throat> primarily, this is important because uh, what is happening in today's world, uh, since the literacy has been introduced to us, we have become so obsessed with the written aspect of language that we are forgetting our oral tradition. We are forgetting the fact that <clears throat> we are actually turning our voices into whispers, which is a very demeaning fact. As of today, we have more than 700 languages in this country which were never written down and are they're still not written down. And they engulf an amount of secrets of human nature, human tolerance for others and survival. And these languages are on the brink of extinction. extinction. So we have to do something about, so that these languages don't go away from us. The fact that they have survived for thousands of years, despite the Holocaust of globalization and pushing the languages into, uh, into you know, oblivion, we have survived these uh, languages. And the reason is because of the oral tradition, because oral tradition makes the language life strong. We are, along with the language extinction, we are also concerned with the linguistic structures, you know, the kind of uh, people who are not linguists, excuse me, people who are not linguists, you know, they, they would, uh, uh, for them, I would say that there are kind of uh, structures, the kind of uh, elements that you use in your language, they also get lost when the languages get lost. So, because grammar does not exist in a vacuum, grammar needs people to speak the language and then only it, it stays. I, this is, um, uh, this is a, a facsimile of my latest book, Voices from the Lost Horizon, which is also my, you can see at the background of my presentation. I recently brought out the folk, folk tales, the oral tradition of this great Andamanese community, which is the survival of the uh, pre-Neolithic uh, uh, stage of human uh, existence. They were the ones who migrated out of Africa 70,000 years ago. And it was very difficult to uh, record their oral tradition because most of the people have had forgotten. Anyway, so this is just to show you that uh, the oral tradition should be recorded and it, it, it does uh, inform people about your ethnicity, about your civilization, about your historicity. Now, I was talking about uh, the linguistic structures and I let me apprise you of this, that uh, in Tankul Naga, Tibutu Baman language of the Nagaland, as you know, have large number of words designating how one walks, how one cries or how one cuts. And languages represent the cognitive world of the speakers and the loss or erosion of languages deprives them of comprehending their world, environment, and culture. And to some degree, the power of, or the ability of cognition diminishes. And I'll give you some examples. I'm sure some of you would recognize these. In Tankul Naga, kazat means to walk. But you can have so many ways you can kazat, you see? So you have yang, yang, yang yai kazat, to waddle like a child. But you can also have shing, shing kazat, you can have thung thung kazat and so on and so forth. They have something like 59 ways you can do this. This is known in expressive, morpho expressive morphology. Recently, even the Western world has been uh, drawn to the, this magnificent linguistic structures that most of our tibeto burman languages and Austroasiatic languages of the Himalaya like Khasi and others 
and many other languages, even the Munda languages, especially Santhali and Mundari, you know, they have a very, the, you can write a whole grammar of it. Now, these are the constructions, they are very difficult to translate in any language. The translation you see on the screen has been done by me and Victor, Ahum Victor, one of my ex-students, and we tried our best to represent the structure in as go, as, as a appropriate way as we could. But let me tell you, it's a Herculean task to translate these because these are the words in your language which indicate a very finer perception that the community has developed over thousands of years. Just imagine if you replace your language by English, which does not have these kind of constructions, what will happen? You may eventually, you know, after mutation, as they say, eventually after the third generation, fifth generation, you may, the community may lose these cognitive and the perceptive powers that you have of such fine quality, you know. Similarly, in Khasi, we noticed they had, they had 53 ways of walking and 59 ways of crying and many ways of cutting. And this is true of not only just of manner adverbs, this is also true of the attributes of a noun. So for example, in Santhali or in Mundari, the dal can be thick in something like 35 ways. You see, it depends how it is boiled, what has gone into it, what is the process. And just one small word indicates the whole process. So what I'm trying to say that in, with the endangerment of the language, the structures also get engendered. So what you must do is that you must retain and keep speaking your language. And one way of doing it that you can keep restoring, uh, that means the stories that are there in your language, you can keep telling those stories again and again to children. And they basically will break various kinds of boundaries. What are the boundaries? One is the boundary of fiction and nonfiction. What is a fiction and what is a nonfiction? The oral tradition never maintains the two differently. It's all interwoven. Similarly, between the performing and the non-performing forms or the arts, as we know in the modern world, you see, there is no difference, or I should say there's not a clear cut difference in the oral tradition between the performing and non-performing art forms. If you remember when a person tries to start telling a story, he lends into a folk song in between, then a poetry, and sometimes they enact the whole uh, scene of the story. And in some of the parts of India, like in Rajasthan, ultimately they start painting the story, what is known as part Chitrakatha. So the whole performance, you know, or whole narration of the story goes from non-performing, as you can say non-performing, I don't think so, but this is how the dichotomy of the educated world does bring in between the non-performing to the performing art, because all is in one unison. You don't see, the oral tradition does not see these different uh, forms of art. They all see that these are the integrated forms of arts which make one whole. So the oral tradition brings breaks down several boundaries. The oral tradition also breaks down boundaries between space and time. You can tell stories anytime of uh, any time and of any uh, and at any space. The the other very interesting aspects is that the stories keep on evolving with culture. You see, it, it is always new. I always say that the, it is not like frozen literature. Once it is written, it is written, nothing changes, right? But when you are retelling the story, then every narrator puts, him or her, put, puts his or her version and sometimes relates to the current culture. Now, this is a very, very interesting and evolving and a very, in, very uh, um, engaging uh, practice to, to, you know, to lure people to know what kind of culture you belong to. Similarly, there are historiographies that undergo transmutations as they traverse vast landscape with varying languages, dialects, and cultures. After all, we have more than 300 versions of Ramanas and more than 1,000 stories emerging from Mahabharata. So, you know, the, the, this, this richness in your thought process, this richness in your um, ability to connect to your culture, and that this richness that you give to your child, you know, how to perceive things minutely, 
comes from oral tradition. So it's very important that we retain this. The other aspect about tribal folklore that I always have felt in my last few years of uh, study of tribal folklore, it should be understood from the point of view of the tribals as the creator, consumer and transmitter of their own creation. It's a culmination of cumulative knowledge and memory. After all, it's far away from the literate written culture of single authorship and single copyright. And this is very important, especially in modern world. Every time, uh, even the Sahit Academy asks me, which, who holds the copyright of this oral literature? There is the, the fact, this possession, this modern concept of possession does not exist among tribes. Sometimes they are been, you know, exploited because of that. But this is a culmination of a common, uh, common tradition. So there is no single copyright. And hence, there is never one version of oral tradition. You may find that the same oral story is rendered by different people in different ways. And sometimes the stories also takes a new shape and meaning according to the narrator. But this is the beauty of it. This flexibility of oral tradition of a particular story is the beauty of it. And as I said, this is all because the folklore of tribal culture is uh, of tribal world always connect the integrated worldview of man with nature. And this is another uh, aspect that uh, one can uh, go on for hours that how the tribal culture especially integrates his worldview or her worldview with the nature because they live in nature. And so much so that the two entities, the self and the world of nature they live on are not different, but just one. And this intimate and inextricable relationship between tribe and the indigenous land is, if this is broken, a tsunami of despair and loss of language, culture, knowledge, religious beliefs, myths and self-confidence sweep the community. And this happens. This happens and have, we have seen it that if there is a confiscation of your land or jungle or new rules are passed by the government so that you don't uh, stay in the same place Exactly this happens, you know, the tsunami of despair comes and overwhelms you. And this, uh, this has to be stopped because people have to understand that the tribes always amalgamate with the nature as their own. Now, among the oral tradition, there are several genres that uh, uh, you already know and you have been engaged in telling about it to your kids. But the very the one, one aspect I will concentrate today in this lecture is on creation tales or the creation myths. Creation myths are very important, our beginnings and our universe, because it relates to our beginnings. The quest of one's origin is a primordial inquiry, as we know, because it is an inquiry into the nature of being. Self is not seen in a vacuum, but as an integral part of environment that engulfs individual and its society. So the environment is deconstructed, not only of natural attributes, but also of objects and gods. But these gods and goddesses are not sacred, but they are humanized. And this happens only in the oral tradition. So the creation tales fascinate me the most because, and I'm sure some of you also are agree with me because the way the universe and its components like earth, sky, clouds, all are uh, seen in this are amazing. And they relate to the history, to philosophy, and many other aspects of the culture. So the other aspect of uh, which is very wonderful about the creation myths are that they are generally transferred intergenerationally. So your grandmother told your mother, and your mother told you, and you will tell your children. It's, it goes on and on in the, as an intergeneration transfer. It also helps you secure and uh, take pride in your culture and in your history. So the, well, the creation traits, and as I said, that it, it breaks down several boundaries, the oral tradition, and so was for the creation tales, the boundary between prose and poetry merge into one, and narration and drama also merge into one. And also this is, music is also being uh, sometimes added to narrate a creation tale. I have, I have recorded many creation tales across India and I realized that 
music as an integral part of creation tales. So where else will you find in, in a narration of a story in English or Hindi or any other modern language, this kind of amalgamation of different forms of art and also different information about your culture and society. Other thing is it is also timeless and relates to ancient heritage of the society. The, I'm also wonderstruck by the kind of variation that exists, you know, in creation myths. So never think that this person is telling me wrong. The creation tale is such and such. No, every narrator brings in his different change. The other aspect of creation myths is the ordering of events. What precedes and what follows is very significant as not only it is indicative of genesis of many worlds around us, it also informs us of the world view of the community. In that process, genesis question arises what is most significant piece of origin that was created before the rest of the world. And this is very important to know that what the community thinks. I'll give you an example. For example, <clears throat> the uh, the Santali creation myth, in Santali creation myth, a pair of birds was created first and humans were created later. In fact, it was the eggs of the birds which are hashed into human figures. On the contrary, when I was collecting folk tales of great Indomanis, I realized that it is the other way around. It is the human who was created first, a male one, then a female and the children, and all the humans were transformed into birds. And this was noted in a story known as Jiro Mite. And this is a very interesting story of the birth of avian diversity. Why they have so many birds. And now this later on actually led me as a linguist uh, to find out the names of the birds. And I started doing morphological analysis and it led to a very interesting book on birds. But Jiro Mite is a story where, which shows that most of the children of Andamanis became birds. So there were two stories. One story was that uh, how the men and women were created. This was initially published by National Book Trust. It's available in York uh, place also, 35 rupees a piece. And then there's another story of Jiro Mita, which I just told you, where it shows that how the uh, humans become birds. So these are the two interesting stories of Great Andamanis, which are just the opposite of the creation tales of the Asanthali. So, they, then there are many other interesting aspects that the creation tales tell you. For example, in Great Indomanis, is the I was I was made to realize that uh, the story was so interesting because it talks about the outer world, the world that we leave behind when we die. But then we go to the outer world, which was very interesting because I have read this kind of philosophy in Vedas, but I had never expected a short story or a folk tale. Which is, uh, which is in the community, which, which is 70,000 years old, you know, not, not 7,000, please mind it, 70,000 years old, there are ancestors who have retained this story, which talks about the outer world. They also, the story also talks about the five elements of life, water, earth, fire, sky, and space. So it's a very holistic story. If you can get hold of it, please read it. If you cannot go hold of it, it's also included in the new uh, latest edition of my book, Voices from the Lost Horizon. But what I'm trying to say that if you go deep into your creation tales, you will realize the amount of philosophy that the stories emits is uh, worthy to be taught to your children. Now coming to the Northeast, as you know, this is these, each and every uh, seven sisters, you know, and eight, eight is your brother, like Sikkim. Uh, the, all these uh, states have amazing diversity of folk tales, oral tradition. And I'm sure if someone collects creation tales, though they're adjacent to each other, the creation tale within Arunachal Pradesh from various tribes would be different, you know, from one tribe to another. And within a tribe also from one region to another. So, <clears throat> For example, let me give you just one example of lepchas, which I found very interesting. Inhabitants of Sikkim, and some of you, or most of you may already know, but I was very fascinated by the fact that they believed that they were created from the fresh snow of Mount Kanchanjanga. 
the, this is the guardian deity of Sikkim. And they, they, they believe that in the beginning, the Himalayas were created and two of the mountains, Kanchanjanga and Tangshan were created as the husband and wife. However, they did not live like uh, husband and wife later on. And uh, <clears throat> they, they believe that they, but they do believe they, they, because they live like husband, uh, uh, the, uh, some, of the, some of the stories in the, among the say, say lectures are also when, uh, when the two, two were like brother and sisters, but you know, there's a variation. So I'm not sure uh, which one to believe, but everyone, as I said, every, every story has to be believed. But uh, <clears throat> the lectures believe the more the story is that they, they, they think they are the uh, children of the first parents and these are the kan Kanchanyanga. Uh, the, uh, the, this is what I'm saying that there was another version of it, but uh, maybe since they lived like husband and wife, the children of them are uh, considered to be the uh, offsprings of the Kanchanjanga and other mountain. So the lectures consider Mount Kanchanjanga to be the place of origin and the mythological country to be Mai Liang, the land of eternal paradise. It is generally accepted that the land was spread over a vast area that stretches across Sikkim, Darjeeling, Bhutan, Eastern Nepal today. So you see the creation tale of a particular community does not also know the boundaries of space, as I said. Now these are today in modern world, they are different countries. Nepal is different, Bhutan is different, and Darjeeling and Sikkim are not in one other in one country. But you see the 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 as far as the folk tale goes or the creation tale goes, it crosses the international boundaries. And this is the quote of uh, this author who, uh, anthropologist, umbilical cord of the community is thus linked to the mountain and its presence permeates every aspect of lepcha life. Of course, when they when this get up, they see the mountain range and every time they also identify the each peak they think is the clan where they have to go after the death. So Mu is it called? So the, one of the main functions of myths as agreed by many scholars has been not just to explain what happened in the beginning and what happened in later, but to establish the basis of social or religious order in the community, you see? And this is what I want to emphasize that, you know, it ultimately does bring in some kind of social cohesion. So the oral tradition should not be undermined. There's another myth of origin of uh, Makha, Makrai race, which is, uh, I'm sure Bao uh, tribes is here listening to my talk. They know better than me about uh, this uh, particular creation tale, which is very interesting because here the woman con gets conception because of the clouds uh, droplets. And as a result, she bears three offsprings, God spirit type, which is known as Ora or tiger, okay. And the youngest is Alchemayo, which is a human being. And the narration is a very long narration because of constant fights between the three brothers, but ultimately human wins over. Among my collection of creation tales, this was the only creation tale where I found that a woman is giving birth to, you know, very different types of species. But this is, that woman should not be looked as a human woman. That should be looked as a woman of originator of the world. And as you can see that it, it gives rise to the spirits, the animal world, and the human world. So this is a, these are very interesting aspects in creation tales, which comes out very succinctly when we uh, get uh, to into the bottom of these. Similarly, Nagas have uh, again uh, a very interesting uh, story. They have a couple of stories. One of them is very much close to the biblical story of Adam and Eve. And I'm not sure whether they are influenced by the Christianity or they have it their own. This is the uh, story where there's also mention of a garden of Shongchan and so on and so forth. Now, the, the fact that creation myths depicts past of the society, its social values, beliefs, philosophy, worldview, and cultural artifacts is basically giving you anthropomorphism, a personification of various elements woven into the so the humans apart, even the gods and goddesses and the animals and the land around you, also everything takes a humanization. 
aspect. Taking cue from Lewis-Strauss, we can identify three levels of represent representation within the myth, geographic, sociological, and cosmological. So this is uh, an encompassing way of teaching a child how to look at the world and how to relate your own culture to the rest of the world. The rural literature is a repository of indigenous knowledge which empowers the community to understand its past, engage meaningfully with the present, and insightfully shape the future. So what more do you want in life? If you have something which gives you three dimensions of the time and relate you to the three dimensions of the time, you are better off with this kind of a symbol, with this kind of a support to continue your life. The tribes connect their past with the present, living being with the dead and ideas with their reality in their own space. The visual metaphors and similes, allegories and symbols created by oral poets are the verbal expression energized with high creative order which unfolds their situated cognition. Tribal oral literature is strong in building cultural capital. So orality is very important. And this also brings you uh, to a platform where you will keep attuned with your culture and you will not forget your culture. That's why I said you stay away from cultural amnesia because that's what is happening in today's communities. People are forgetting what kind of cultural base they had. And the, <clears throat> the oral narratives have always helped the Adivasi community to negotiate the cultural amnesia brought on by the community's encounter with cultural, religious, demographic, and other forces of change, which are stronger than its own. So this is the only way you can, sh you can shed off this kind of cultural change, which is thrusted on you. Myths or narratives are instrumental to perpetuate knowledge, values, and aesthetics of human thoughts and actions. So don't think they'll make you an old fashioned because in school you're going to study the other subjects also. But this orality has to be retained by the community at a community level. Never forget that language encodes our culture. It encodes our beliefs. It also encodes our worldview and knowledge system. Hence, we cannot afford to lose our language. The main reason why we are so much concerned of the fact that the linguistic diversity is decreasing at an alarming speed, this is the reason. Because if, we, if this is the way languages are getting lost every day, because every fortnight a language dies, it's somewhere taking away the plethora of knowledge system. Not only that, the cognitive ability to understand a universe along with it, as I gave you those expressive morphology examples in Tankul Naga, it shows that it is eroding our cognitive and perceptive abilities also. So we have to safeguard ourselves and it's very easy to do it. Just keep on, hold on to your language. Don't let it slip away. This was a quote, I'm quoting from Boa Senior, one of the last speaker of the Bo language of the great Andamanis. She used to say, Pakad ke rakho, jane mat do. You know, bhasha hai, hamari bhasha, hum mar jayenge to kon bolega? Humko samjho. So this is very important. You have to keep on speaking this language, your own. And this is a, just a sample I was telling you about. The indigenous knowledge can be stored in very many ways. If you start looking around in your language, how many birds uh, are you watching and what are they called? And if you start analyzing the names of those languages, sometimes you find they are not very opaque. They're very transparent. For example, woodpecker. This is a woodpecker of Andaman. And it looks so different than the woodpecker that we have in, in Delhi. But <clears throat> the woodpecker is a very transparent word, wood, peck, and earth, three morphemes. Similarly, there are many names in the birds in avian history of your language, which will be very transparent. And try to find out why your community named a particular bird that way. So what I'm trying to say, uh, actually, is that a great uh, boon that you have is from the, the fact that uh, you have the um, 
way. The, the great boon that you have with you is the your mother tongue, your mother language, which has stored large number of indigenous knowledge system. But I'm more concerned about the fact that the mother tongue is so beautifully constructed within your culture and ethos that it gives you a very fine, very fine tune of perception. If you lose your mother tongue, you also lose this perception. And that's very important for us to hold on to because the kind of minute distinctions that you can make, I mean, it is emoted by your expressive morphology. I'm sometimes very conscious of my walk when I walk in Shillong or any other area because I always think that people must be watching me very minutely. How do I walk? That minuteness is not there among the city people of Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay because they don't speak that kind of a language. So the cognitive ability and the perceptive abilities are sharpened only when you retain your language. So this is what I have to really say today about the oral tradition, but I'm, I'll be very happy to answer your questions if you have any questions and let me know you can answer in Hindi, question in English or in Hindi. Uh, and I would like to uh, answer to all your questions if possible. Thank you again for uh, giving me this time and uh, congratulations for your uh, such an auspicious uh, festival today of uh, Sangani. And uh, we, I wish I was there in prayer person, but it's difficult as you know, but this is the best that we could have taken advantage of our times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Professor and Bidadi, for your wonderful talk. We, with our culture, we relate to our past. With our culture, we see insights to shape our future. Uh, what a wonderful words. Um, thank you very much. I want to uh, inform the audience that if you are working on the uh, indigenous culture, language, etc., uh, you can always approach her for help, for guidance uh, in future. Um, many of her stories, her books are available on the internet. Uh, please uh, search whoever might be interested. Due to lack of time, uh, I could not uh, highlight uh, many of them today here. We will take the questions, but before that, I have to sincerely, sincerely apologize to one of our participants, a young boy who was supposed to uh, recite a rhyme, a Liang Mai rhyme, a sort of a lullaby in the beginning. But uh, due to a slip of mind, uh, it, I got so excited and uh, it, it skipped. And he is still uh, available and ready. Uh, before we take question, it will be a matter of two yes, minutes. Yes. I oh. will now. I will ask uh, our child. Young and beautiful, handsome boy, we ran long bow upon my six years old to recite a uh, Liang Mai uh, uh, lullaby. Please. Can we see him? Oh. <coughs> Spotlight high five and I mean no mother. No look at me. What? No more. Are we dumb or two? Are we then no more? Huh? Yes, yes. Video. 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 What like the Kaimine? Video. 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 Light set, light set. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, we are very sorry we are outside, so there are some inconveniences. Uh, now, 
<coughs> now he will be uh, reciting the, the verse. And then yeah. when I say start, you can yeah. start, okay? Yes. Chuba Meja? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, you can start. Okay. 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 ไอ้ตัวนี้ได้ Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bonmai. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, now um, we will take uh, questions. If from the audience, if anyone, uh, I, I, I open the time for question and answer our, please take time. Okay, uh, Wisham. Yes, please. I, I thought uh, your your community member will come up with a question. I'm not the right person to speak. Uh, actually, I'm so thankful to Professor Mbitabi. I missed the first interesting part of the talk because I was in another meeting. So, um, uh, Madam has uh, beautifully explained about uh, the cultural insights of orality in tribal culture. And perhaps uh, many of us have not realized the kind of uh, richness that our language can offer to us. And she, uh, she is the right person uh, who knows uh, so much about uh, tribal orality and perhaps which is also losing out. So one of the points that I have been always uh, focusing is that our languages are not actually dying as it, is, as it does in many parts of the world. But what happens is our orality is uh, disappearing slowly and gradually. So uh, in that sense, I really congratulate uh, this uh, Liang Mai Literature Society headed by some young linguists uh, to educate the people. So uh, my question to Professor Abita Abi is that uh, you have uh, made uh, several interesting points uh, about human uh, humanization or what you call uh, the orality, if you study the orality of uh, tribal languages where uh, fauna and flora and uh, what do you call the topo topographical, um, say hills or mountains, they have been personified or they are humanized. So this is very common trend and you have succinctly showed it in your uh, stories from other cultures, not uh, rela uh, distantly related to the cultures of Northeast India. So my uh, what you call uh, point is that oh, what what must have led to uh, uh, that uh, what you call personification of these uh, non uh, mountains, rivers, or fauna and flora uh, to human beings. So what could be the reason that most of the people or uh, what you call uh, you forget about uh, and. Uh, uh, what you call modern society, most of the ancient society relate uh, their life. So human life is uh, integral to uh, what you call the non-living uh, objects, for, for, for fauna and flora. So what must have led it to such a personification of non-living things uh, with uh, human beings? So this is my question out of interest here. Yeah? Thank you, Pautam, for <clears throat> asking this question. I think, um, the what the way I have understood the tribes and the way I have understood the indigenous communities of India, <clears throat> I feel that it is because, as I said in my talk, that the tribes amalgamate the an entire cosmos into one. For them, the boundaries are not very clear cut or distinct the way the boundaries are among the city communities or people living in cities. The, since the tribes have lived in the nature, 
right from the very beginning. Every element of nature or every element of cosmos is part of their life. And hence, they pro also, this, this has led to several things, you know. This has left to, they are the biggest environmentalist. They are the protectors of the environment. Have you ever seen a tribe mutilating or cutting down forests or completely destroying our environment? You would never hear such a thing because it's part of their, they have personified maybe some trees as their gods, some trees as their parents, some trees as their children or whatever. So all throughout my experience uh, collecting the oral tradition or oral forms of literature among the tribal groups, and especially those hunter and gatherers also, and those who are living in the jungles, you see, they, they see that every element of has a life and every element is attached to them personally. And hence, this is the reason they think that they are inseparable from them. They're intimately and inextricably related to each other. Which, which, which actually makes a whole. So these small parts makes a whole and this whole they live in. That's why, that's the reason. That's what I think. But you should ask your elders also. Okay, <laughs> uh, to continue with uh, your question, okay, uh, you have looked into the cultural aspect, but something, uh, since you are not the, the, the settler of that reason, one, mm -hmm. one often uh, uh, noticed uh, as an insider. So there is an insider story and one is the outsider story. Sure, so sure. There, are, there are lots of communities among the tribal uh, cultures and orality. Uh, mm -hmm. But perhaps the narratives that is created, when I say the narrative, the rhetoric that is uh, used in uh, Northeast India is dividing the people rather than uniting. So political rhetorics or whatever rhetorics, call it ethnic rhetoric. So this is something uh, as a person who is a uh, non-settler non of uh, notice, that you might not uh, notice it. But uh, we, uh, who are the settler of this region, uh, we find these rhetorics and, and this kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, mm, uh, uh, things that, <clears throat> among the people of Northeast India. So uh, uh, revisiting our, uh, what do you call, our uh, orality and culture, would somehow pave the way, pave the way for uh, what you call unity. In fact, not even I say unity should not be a very uh, in a general in a, in a generic word. At least people realize that ultimately, once we dig our history very closely, we have more of uh, more of uh, what you call uh, more of uh, similarities, assimilation, and uh, rather than the narrative that is. Uh, created uh, to create uh, division among society. Perhaps uh, it may not be relevant, but perhaps Madam uh, would not have, uh, would have, might have missed this uh, uh, ground reality. So this is for her information. Thank you, ma'am. I don't know whether you're talking about the divisions that are created by the tribes themselves or the divisions that is created by the outsiders. It's no, I'm talking about the, the division. I'm talking about the division not created by outsiders, but the current narratives prevalent among the, uh, what do you call, uh, so -called, is influenced purely by politics. Okay. Yeah, not by outsiders, politics, politics. internal politics. Yeah. Well, I do not know. Well, this is a question which needs a very long debate. The, 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 you, the, the facts in the oral tradition that you're looking at as a form of uh, division, may not be the divisive forces, may be the distinctive forces that they recognize that X is dis distinct from Y. But that doesn't mean that they are, they are dividing the X between Y. Ultimately, the oral traditions, especially the kind of uh, narrations they have, in, engages all these distinctive forces into one whole. And uh, yes, there is a distinction uh, you can call division between one community or one tribal community to another tribal community, which also gives them their identity. So that's not a division. So it all depends how you look at it. Because as far as the orality is concerned, it says it is, these are the forms of literature which are sung, which are narrated to the community. And the community is participatory. You see, the, the, the best part about the oral tradition, vis-a-vis -vis the written tradition is, Written tradition is not participatory in nature. The book comes in the market, it's up to you whether you buy it or not. The book is in front of you, it's up to you whether you read it or not. But when somebody is narrating something, 
you are sitting in front of the person and you are also saying, as we say in Hindi, hankara. You always keep, keep saying, ha, ha, ha. That means it is attentive. They ask questions. Back and forth, the dialogues take place. So it's very participatory in nature, you see. So the oral tradition takes people along with it. That's what I'm saying. And so the distinctions or the divisions, in fact, melt away. So we, it depends upon what kind of divisions you, are, uh, you have in mind. But as I said, this is a topic that we can discuss at length some other time, maybe. Uh, okay. Depends upon the organizer, what day we can continue now if, now, if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, that is a suitable response to the question raised by Dr. Pautang Hoki from JNU. Thank you, Dr. Pautang Hoki, for your questions and the comments, and also particularly your presence. I think we can continue uh, that part maybe on the other uh, time. Now uh, let us move on to next uh, question. Or I, now I want to give time for our uh, friend from uh, Miranda House, Delhi, uh, Sen Gang Liu, Thai Mai. Please. Uh, thank you, ma'am, uh, for the wonderful talk. Uh, I'm particularly interested in oral tradition because uh, my research is exactly that. Uh, I'm from Rongmai community, uh, but I'm married to Liangmai. And uh, my PhD thesis is called The Oral Tradition of the Roman People, as simple as that. So, oh, um, oh. yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, initially, uh, what I have done is from my pre pre PhD, I had started archiving oral traditions and things like that. Later on, I have uh, used do those material uh, to do my PhD. Um, my question is um, that, in terms of, for, uh, uh, you know, not so uh, established uh, scholars like us, and particularly from indigenous community, who are many of us are first uh, generation li literate uh, people, lit literate class. And uh, we are in a big dilemma because um, we have collected, we have archived, we have translated, we have transliterated, and uh, we have theorized it. We have used theory from all over the world and we have traveled, but then when it comes to publication, when it comes to publication, what happens is that uh, most publishing houses would, uh, it, it, it is very hesitant to uh, publish our works, uh, despite the hard work, despite the kind of practical, you know, empirical uh, data that we have collected. Uh, because of course they would give different excuses. One of the excuses, uh, you know, very common excuse is, um, as this is, there is no market for it because it is such a narrow kind of a work that is a small communi community mm -hmm. of less than a lakh people speaking and who's going to read it or who's going to, uh, you know, in terms of dissemination, it'll be, are, are they going to read in English? Uh, we have the, you know, we have always we post-colonial, uh, you know, students or post-colonial uh, teachers. I'm a teacher in Miranda House as well. We talk about our theorizing, not you creating a theory for ourselves and and all of that and we have done that and with, with a lot of hard work and uh, because we don't have pre pre predecessors uh, we don't have work of our area we have we are the first generation who have theorized our own work um, but then the the irony is when a, a, a white person excuse me for saying that but when a when a person from established Ivy Ivy League University from abroad does the same thing. It, it, it is a groundbreaking work. It's, it is considered as something that has been done with such tremendous work and things like that. So that we are stuck in this dilemma. We are stuck in this predicament that while we do the same kind of work, perhaps much better in terms of a cultural expressions, cultural philosophies, understanding of it, the ethnic and emic, ethic and emic uh, aspect of it. Despite that, we are finding very, very difficult, you know, to find publishers uh, who would be willingly, uh, without hesitation, uh, you know, kind of publish our works uh, because of market, perhaps, or because of, I don't know what, you know, uh, they talk about quality, but I think uh, if a uh, uh, university has given us a PhD and we have gone through peer review uh, journals and things like that, perhaps there is, I mean, I believe in our, in our ability to produce quality work as well. So ma'am, uh, how do you think is, uh, you know, how long is this going, the dilemma going to be stuck with us um, for like the likes of we, uh, me and Wicham or Kailat or all of us who are uh, in very, very initial stage of our, uh, you know, in terms of our community as a researcher. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sin Ganglu. This, uh... You had a long uh, exposition and I can see that you are very troubled by the fact that the 
there is a kind of a divisive society out there which publishes uh, works of the foreigners on the same indigenous communities that you have worked on or uh, many of us have uh, work on and, and the other one who are from indigenous communities themselves. You see, publication is uh, not my forte. I have no idea about how, uh, why people publish because uh, I know what, the, what you just talked about, the commercialization. It all depends upon who sells and what sells. You see, so if you are talking about uh, any oral uh, tradition which is translated in English to be sold, I don't think there should be a problem for that. But if you want to publish within your language, yes, there could be a problem because then the publisher may say that you have very few people who read or write this language. So what's the idea of selling it? That I can imagine. But as far as the translating it in English is concerned, because it has a wider publicity, wider readership, it, it should not be rejected if it is coming from the indigenous communities. In fact, on the contrary, I'm noticing that these days publishers want authentic material. And they think the authentic material can only come through the indigenous community, not from the translators community. So if you are translating your own uh, stuff, your own language, your own genre, then you are a better judge of doing it than let's, let me say if I do it. So the publishers should, and they are coming more and more into the forum, which was not there. Even Penguin is now publishing indigenous community works and other big houses have also come. But ultimately I'm not the person to answer your question that why you know, the publishing house do not publish one particular book uh, by a community member vis-a-vis -vis the, the similar book by another community member because the bias of course, uh, talks a lot about it, but things are changing. And uh, the even this book that uh, which I just brought out, the vanishing, the voices from the lost horizon, it's about great and the money is the language which is no longer spoken. There are only three speakers left. But Niyogi books came forward and uh, they are, uh, they not only published it, there are QR codes given you must uh, take access to this book. In fact, some of you can buy it, it's available on Amazon. There are QR codes in the book. So you can uh, see the visual, the people singing the songs and uh, audio and visuals are there. So this is something very unique. And they brought out this book with their own uh, idea. I never thought of QR code could work, but it, it works beautifully. So now the publishers are coming forward on their own to understand and to retain our morality. Otherwise, why would they bring this kind of a work, you see? And I'm told that they have recently accepted another book of folk tales and uh, folk stories and songs from one of, the one of the tribal languages of the Northeast. I do not know which one. So I'm sure there are other publishers also who will be coming forward to, because now these days it has become more, uh, you, I shouldn't say the word fashionable, but it has become more acceptable to understand the other side of the story, you see, and from the people who are the community members, who are the indigenous community members. So don't be disheartened. I'm sure you will find ultimately a good publisher to publish your oral work, oral tradition work. As far as your thesis is concerned, that's a different game altogether. Thesis kind of work, which is made only of academic and philosophy, people certainly uh, see whether they have a market in, in that or not. But even that, you know, the, uh, these days people want to understand the philosophy behind what you have done, you know, the kind of work that you are doing. So don't, uh, you just have to spread your wings and explore a little more. And I'm sure you'll find some good publisher to undertake the publication of your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, um, I'm sorry, we are really running uh... I, uh, out of time because uh, we have another session. So I would uh, end with two quick questions, if any, from the house, two very quick questions, only two more questions for uh, asking to the speaker. I'm sorry for uh, cutting short. I really want to go on the okay. whole time. Yeah, please, two questions. Okay, which I'm, I'll come in. Yeah, please. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Uh, uh, good evening, or rather good morning, ma'am. It's nice to see you again. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I remember um, we had conversation in CIL that 
uh, yeah, 2018 yeah, yeah. probably yeah that day you talk about this uh, origin meet and uh, i came i talked to you and you uh, you have encouraged me to look into the origin meet of liang mai and mm -hmm. i'm still working on that uh, oh, i've collected some yeah nice. <laughs> i've collected yeah. some some data mm -hmm. and hopefully by next year i'll i'll be able to come up with a with a paper or something like that with some of my friends now now my question is um you, you have mentioned a little bit about uh, tangkul uh, tangkul example also about uh, you know uh, biblicalized or christianized way of uh, oral tradition so i have also come across uh, similar things in liang mai where you know certain things are uh, quite biblicalized you know so so uh, closely related with uh, some stories in the Bible, in the bible so yeah so so my question is like how do we classify this kind of uh, thing you know i mean i can clearly see that you no know, this this idea must have come from the bible it may not be the the idea may not be indigenous to, to the people say so something like uh, uh, how people started speaking different languages it's very similar with the story of babel the power of babel in the bible i have the heard that kind of story so how do we classify those kind of stories? Do we consider those as the uh, authentic uh, Liang Mai oral tradition, or you know we look more into it and you know come up with uh, different? See, as I said, uh, um, you see the creation tales or any tale, any oral tradition has a lot of variation. In Santali mm. creation tale, also when I was collecting, I realized there were two, three variations and very drastic change towards the end, but they all are all are authentic. So you should not doubt okay. the authenticity of a story if it looks very much biblical, because it may be true that it is influenced by Bible, but then it is it is their own. You know they have evolved after being influenced from Bible. The story must have evolved from narrator to narrator. You see, mm -hmm. and ultimately whatever you are hearing today, would you know your children will not hear the same story perhaps. You see, and by that time it will change again. This ever mm. evolving media. So the, I don't think there is, a, you should doubt the authenticity of a story if you find a lot of variations, but yes, there could be a story in Liang Mai, which is not biblical in nature and has, yeah. has telling something mm -hmm. else. And as I said, that creation tales does not just confines to the creation of human beings. There are creation tales mm -hmm. of how the avian or the flora or the fauna also were created. And then mm -hmm. ultimately everything links one to each other. So you'll have to see how they are linked. So they, you, in other words, you will have to collect more stories from more diverse people and of, from diverse yeah. age groups. People who are okay. very old, who are not, uh, who were perhaps not Christianized. Maybe it is difficult to find a non-Christian, but you may find some non-Christians maybe in another village or someplace. So, you know, you, you have to just diversify more to find out the varieties of creation myths within your language. It would be plenty or several, mm. but each and each is authentic yeah. in its own right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, Kandar. Um, now, uh, uh, this will be probably the last question. Uh, Dr. Mashongdibo, you have some comment on the chat box. Are you there? Please, uh, a quick question or comment. She's, she's left, perhaps. Oh, I, okay, if he's uh, not available, one quick question from anyone from the house, and then uh, we will end with that, if any. All right. Yeah, yes. Anyone? Wisam, can you hear me? Yes, please, Kamla, please. Uh, good evening, ma'am. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it would be uh, in your class, ma'am. Yes, uh, yes. I was worrying, thinking about that. The number of the folk stories is not increasing. Uh, we, we are using uh, the old folk stories uh, as we use in our uh, childhood. Uh, uh, nowadays, the new generation is just focusing on the animations, cartoons, and the uh, games, uh, and so many things. Uh, only folk songs is increasing, sir, ma'am. That's why uh, we need 
to focus on folk stories, modern folk songs, and other things. That's my suggestion, ma'am. How, how, what can we do about that? Well, uh, the onus lies on the old people of your community. You know, they should keep telling the stories of their childhood and the other folk tales that they must have heard. Uh, the folk tales are also created by people just this is as creative as any possible. I know that because of the advent of cartoon movies and other animated films, people are now logged on to the TV or to the computer. But you know, the recent uh, Wancho community has started making animated films on their uh, folks, uh, folk tradition, or let's say oral tradition. So you, the Wancho community took the help of Tara Douglas. She's a very uh, well-known animation filmmaker. So the, you, and it doesn't take much one. I think Manipur also, University of Manipur recently organized a workshop with the help of Tara Douglas to do that, the anthropology department. So you can also, you know, make animated films of the folk tales which are prevalent in your country or in your community so that children are attracted to that. You see, but that's a long process. For the time being, it's better to extract as many folk tales as you can from your parents, grandparents, their relatives, and so on and so forth, and try to document them so the children can hear those folk tales. But life is such that things will change. And life is such that you cannot avoid depleting now this. That's why I say you keep speaking your language and also try to listen to as much oral uh, genre as possible, that will be helpful in creating more this genre. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, once again. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have to cut short the question uh, Q&A hour from here as we have one more session to go. Now I would like to request one of the members of the organizing committee uh, members to say a word of thanks. He is, uh, if I mention his name, uh, Mani Tre Namai, uh, he's a former Lok Sabha member, Parliament of India. I want to thank uh, this uh, uh, elder or our senior. It was he who two years ago, uh, like uh, proposed, let's start a song, folk song competition. And I really want to thank him for his, uh, his patience for our uh, culture. Um, now I give time to uh, uncle for the Word of thanks, please. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wicham, for the introduction. And uh, I would like to start by uh, greeting a very good morning to Professor Anvita Avi uh, and a very good evening to our friends in India. I would like to wish all of you a very happy and prosperous Chagangi. And uh, as today, uh, being the biggest festival of our Chiang Mai community, I'm taking this privilege to wish all of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I, <clears throat> on behalf of the Chiang Mai community and the organizing committee of the second folk song, Chiang Mai folk song competition, I would like to sincerely thank Professor Anvita Ami, uh, an eminent linguist and an awardee of many prestigious awards of her works on tribal oral traditions and culture uh, for sparing her valuable time to deliver a special talk in connection with the preservation and promotion of the tribal oral tradition with Liang Mai language in particular. Uh, <clears throat> and also I would like to thank uh, Professor Anvita for more importantly for reminding us the importance of our mother tongue and to love our languages and traditions. We the Liang Mai people uh, are immensely grateful to Professor Anvita Avi for taking special interest in the Liang Mai language, which is one of the oldest and also one of the highly uh, endangered tribal languages of the Northeast region of India. 
I, on behalf of the community, convey our profound gratitude, love, and best wishes to you and your family. I would also like to express a sincere gratitude to Mr. Awong Bonyumai, Honorable Minister for Forests and Climate Change, and Mr. Namri Inchang, Honorable MLA of Tanning Constituency at Nagaland. Uh, both of them uh, belongs to the Liangmai community for generously sponsoring the second folk song competition. Secondly, I would also like to thank all the competitors who came forward to take part in the second edition of the Liangmai folk song co competition. The merch awaited an exciting event of the utmost importance would not have been possible had it not been for your passionate love for our folk songs. My special and sincere thanks goes to the judges and the organizers for organizing so well and so for giving your best to make the event a grand success. The consistent and tireless efforts you have given to preserve our rich literature uh, will be cherished by one and all. Lastly, I would to thank, I want to, I would like to thank all the viewers and the participate participants uh, for your wonderful support and cooperation rendered to the organizers and the competitors, even in our second year of attempting to preserve our literature and tradition. Thank you all and uh, good night to our friends in India and wishing you, uh, Professor Anvita, a very uh, happy and successful day uh, for our ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Mani, for your, the beautiful words of thanks. Um, so with this, uh, we come to the end of the first session. I once again, before uh, saying bye to ma'am speaker, thank you. I actually see you woke up at 3 a.m. in the Washington, the U.S. today morning. And this shows how much she cared for the uh, uh, indigenous uh, language community. Thank you so much once again. And I also, in the end, thank everyone once again. And thank you, Uncle Mani, for the beautiful word of thanks. Now, for the second session, I will give uh, the time over to Florence Numai, who will be moderating the second session. Moder uh, Florence, please. Can I order? Yes, yes. Uh, very good evening to all. Once again, welcome back to the second session uh, of this uh, second of the second Liang Mai Folk Song Competition Result Declaration Session 2021. Uh, also, would like to extend greetings to a very happy Chigangi. Uh, may God's blessing be upon you all on this auspicious occasion. Um, I would like to uh, take a permission from all the non Yamai speakers that I will be switching my uh, dialect to my own, uh, my language, my speech to my own dialect, Yamai language. Uh, but at the same time, I'll be uh, switching to English uh, in between. So, Tingwang Duji, the thank you, hey, Rai, because how come we won the Olympic high? Had the competition the visa, that you had the result declared to Rabu one Wang Tang high penga so much you, Tingwang Duji, the Rai, the thank you, hey. Um, had the Wang Kai, the Gaba Mai viewers, my audience, my mature readers, I thank you when you support Penga, so Liang Mai Foundation, I see that you have made the mature to thank you for that, but do but can I yeah. And then I second session, I see the result declaration, I see the part of the boy, I like to kind of get program, so I'll be programming all kinds of me. Right, we got speech from uh, jury members. We got five jury members of me. I might do who got two speech right now. Uh, I was speak just the second declaration of the result. Alunyo agunje kabambo. So new first domino. Uh, so new price is domino. Just because the results are declared to be one. I say, uh, manu pingsilag new my panyo. I was once in Lukaine. Uh, I was go 
Result declaration by the sign next Kasara short speech to Kaisibame. I see Ra organization committee new ma maksai audience new ma pili new chala dinkai ni boba me sai milendi habo wan ga lu khai bo suye je dinkai ye but ali bo wan set tin si khe je zarai ga ma chu ndu dinkha din taw khai rai ye tiluza hai ba go speech hours hello saira last ga vote of thanks from brother dr kailat bo new mai pa new vote of thanks ni pa ni chala lutron mi ra bo rai ba ga a uh, speech from judges alugu five members i say five judges dum kangzan pakyu khairai ne first ga apau kai khamang dai mai pa ni first ga po one lurai khai lo apa guloi da sai uncle nampi bo marin mai second judges pa ni di uncle kai khamang ni po one lurai sra pa di to next ka tu zapadi po one lu khai mera din khai ye third ga sai achi ramjan kam bung pa ni di kaden bam khara pisi khai ye fourth ga sai uh anti kental union mai fifth ka side uh, kadala clean ring panyo to za for alaska to za sequence wise have a sequence uh, that kaira line judges to count to see kaye to the right ga judges a speech from judges to the blue for one high look i mirror line right ga uncle ka kama dai mai line pon pi kaye five minutes each to the dental highland ne अंकल ने कौन चुमा गे? म्यूट का खाई बंद था ये। म्यूट अंकल ไอ้มิดมามิดชื่อมิเนี่ยจอยเฮาตะคอยอีนักเซนจะละดินาบวยจิบะจิบิเดนปะจอดินปะจอสุยเมไปรานลุยงอมาเนาะจิบะโกก
Iya, iya. ตั้งวิเดียอยู่ไทยในคุณกุยโบสังฆกุยวงอดอกนั่นซ้ําจ้ะหรือโปรแกรมเลี้ยงไม่พอในสันดงเนี่ยจะโปรแกรมกุยบ
ตัมตัมสะนําตัมตัมเนี่ยสะเลกิงกะตัมกะตัมบ่ดิกําปอบุดบําไบอีเฮนจางมะเงินจางมะกะสุนจางมะเนี่ยกําปอบุลาไฮ
hai tu bu sa lai pelin nai sa keng sang keng bu ali bu sa lai pelin ke keng le liang la hai sa nordi sa ali tribal dung wang ka hai tu sa mai ne mai ra sam pui ka mai bu lai keng king kai bu inga ali liang me dung lai keng hai ti ali liang me dung hai ti sa lai ka pelin ke keng bu sa lai ka pak ka ke keng bu ali za khale chu ze ir ta ni bu le kita aku experience ka, hari ini pui hai boleh ka, kita ngau boleh, kita. So anda kamu ini yang sekarang ke, jual ke keng, hasil kenui, hasil alih upuan, hab saya susah alat keng, aku ini dengar aku asam macam ni, hari tu susah hai bide, macam ni tuan tu, tuju de, sekarang ni aku cunui bo, donui bo, hari sekarang ni aku cunui macam ring teng, jah kering bo kering teng saya, macam ini aku buat dah buat tulu, jah. Thank you, Uncle Nampibo. Panya di liang zat liang pulung tiu sa. Pugu Facebook post ka di du ke inka liang lat kung-kung bodi panyu robot-robot kai bambu em tiu na di pugu tu follow tiu kai lo tiu sa PC kai ye. Thank you, ka di pugu suggestion category wise competition bambu liang suggestion ti kai bengal su di thank you, eh. To koi sara next jury saira achi ram jan kang bung Panyo, hai bugo, hai bugo, panyo pres, panyo pamestai pun hai selu kai lo, jadi bu kai ye. Achi Ramzan Kang bung bama alironga. Kelu rangut bambuin, pelan ni mati ya. Okay. Hmm. Next. Next jury lain tu saya puan Pimi ke? Ah, bermain di sana. Ah, tu dah bihalan di sini. Next jury lain saya. Ah, anti kental ini mai panu puan luhai. Anti ini kunci mage. Anu tu kalo. ตักแล้วนี่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใ
song competition go song go rena pi bi ja along new bi bok sia ba me plam ra pliu do kam sri we contestant ma don sri u za kam mo sa sa pon di phira we ti bi ja pliu ha originality bo pliu go pon ta ta sa rang mi ta di de da di ta sin ni piu me sa ram pui mi ta di da pazat pazat khai lo ja o ma tinga phui khai ba tinga along new bo as hai kum bo pliu sri u za kam khai ma tung di Best dress, Chiblang Alia. What we had did we da we young rabo. Masai, but when we send ship, we go lang di da. We had say we rabo. To why alikura kaman chiz a item new go chiz a pi mi bi first a kent haroi na da we. Chidi kaki ma dong kram z kapa ma dong chira mi ne ma tan z kram z kapa ma dong sa para first a kent na luma ge chid a di. But when we send ship, we chiz a zeng kan ya. Pohon mesan bau kau lain di dah alih award pihai sara wira bau coba aku gama kumpa bapa me hai saya i pasai kenali ukam lantas sara hai kumpadi pernah ramai yang cuci saya wine coba pelam rapi hai keram bersinggau kai betinga aku gak pihai ni bau khat bau coba bapa me si na khat lanta alih video penai sound light hai si fui betinga hai kadi problem nak keng coba me jadi Hai saya ini nak naik aligo judges number one, kau kadi apa zaman kau kadi naik macam tu aja betinga, tuh hera wang tanglu lami aja juga. Aligo se sound gak light gak video gak expert mai mak bisa, beli gua hai pui kung bodi bame. Jadi ini aku experience pun nak si kai bo pelamra i documentary film kau betinga, sound new day, light new day, aja bogo, masa video new day, aja bogo pui betinga. Beli udang kahai kesiar nampi nampai sa pen tu lo sa long cut short cut jadi bodi kampi kampai bame kesiar stack nan tu lo sa kampai bodi bame jadi video ka kampi kampai bo masalah sound ka kampi kampai bo do tadi do beli u kampi besa ketuat kampi saya wira wira bo jadi wisi dia liu kampi mami jadi besi ni alu niu kampi berapa me jadi hai song kampi sa pasai ra kampi lansu ne jadi mana ni I come see my get to add it up to I come so but thing I don't can you focus you have a me just in a cutting kind of book and I can go training to have never 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 you back and drag what come on jury member to go training point I eat everything up a little items I say hi mister items he no go a what's a pira boy to go the Sierra King top of a me did he a little higher up the way in a how long have a size is a high book go my dick so what you must advance you can be able to rally you come down on love thing and I couldn't be deep as I want climb gradually you come say we need to go up a point not you was him out that is a to the set you hey you lose that to lose you can I'm a to do uh we have a thing up uh thank you ball going to mother blue don't I said I think they might even me this time is I a People you bring thing I just think the bomb the apple I'm really young ago treasure a little young ago to let he not master a combo to let a I'm back a super he knows that he was to look at bomb come a I think the police you but can be able to look I don't say a little young my foundation you come has my brother but I come as I live by the master but he was having to turn it to leave you on the side I'm a say I said you young was Luai mana? Ha mana? Cuba ira mazazu bukan bermain sih ni. Alang mah foundation kan bermain macam ni. Ha belu itu saya alih. Dan ni alih go organizer jam dini atau dini bukan bermain. Hadis luar lain rancang kesian bermain. Poin yang melihat ni hadis luar ni jadi saya suini dan suini ya. We appreciate you. Hadis kalau saya hasil baik kan bermain. Ha saya alih go alang mah go treasure rabu itu sih. Aku ga mending tahu sih ni. Aliu, kamsi madi kamu kah membuka sokong bermain asir first wang buaya je 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 pangma gaya je madi bermain buaya pelam rapi kamu ini je kamu kah bisa sih, pokok mesan siang madi bermain papan wisi madi bermain jadi pokok mesan siang madi daun mawar di bermain papan wisi madi daun mawar di bermain sisi di kambi lor sara aliu kategori kalau mawar bisa sih je pasai ra. Hati tu kamu ser, kamu lain saya wina itu bo, aku mau kumpul nasihatif kaya. Mau bawa saya di mana ni kau kalau hati tu thank you eh. Thank you eh aunty, nugu suggestion kui kui bo pihai za. Best dress line, voice clarity line, jadi price dia di tim kumpulan dalam ni yang my foundation ni di note down tu bermakna itu macam ni. Ah, voice saya, 
next ga next jury uh ling one pihaye achi kadala gyu ring pani ba mesai pon lu khailo ba me ba me akon ji ba ma o ji ba me e e to say kraibo ali to kadam pao tingong to bisa thane si besai di thane liang mai foundation hai ze wa kadi bo anu liang ma ze ni ma cha hai ke bi bo hai ze atun mi zo we tingong ni pani ri ga di thoi dam kadi wo pi khai mi lo su ze i kraibo ding khai ye i bought up things ma ding su di atun bui bo bo nu su di mai ma ge si besai di su ze thai nai la jan mai thu lo su ze kam si ma ba di ma lom hai ke bi kum ze kam ko wa ma ga chmai ke king to hai chu ze ngaw lo ze achun wi ke chang e chmai king bi a king wi bi anu ka mai hai ze la jan ma do hai ze king chia ma ge king bi anu liam la tha pau pia la ra hai ze knu ai khang khane la jan ma khang khane ke di ma kum ze liam ma la hai ze tam tam boi ke di ma ga ra tam tam bi sa ba nu bo ye chu di a pau pia mai chu lu ke thu ga ze wa di tam ma ga no cham rong ba ma ga ai bu yu zu wei an nu la thai ze chu ze min ta wei ye si ze ni pa sai ra 100 100 khang di an ranking chi ma ra ko mei chu bo min ning dao ze idiat chun ko ba ding kai ye a go experience thai ze ala chu ba ma sa hello chu ba mai chu ba mai chu ba chu ba chu ba ma e e chu ba mai e e chu sai um Pating di thay min eh, idi di mikay di mikay na kay. Si besay di ina along kuno bo hay sa ano ko competition hay sa kalit bo hay sa liang may lui apaw pero apaw pero lui a apaw pero lad hay sa mga marasing kamba mukum sa kalit budi hay sa bamklan sa wiri bo hay si bo i hay sa at alat a sa season pihay eh. Kalit budi hay sa bamklan sa wiri bo hay si bo i ni hay sa ding kala ni. Ala juba ma. Juba me. Me ji. Oh ho 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 ho. Juba juba me. Wang lan bu tukum lam di hai ze. Bam glan sai u de bo e ji bo e hai ze. A long ning din kai ke lan ne. Si bu sai di pan ya ba sum ba sai. Hai ze anu di kam bi sai di bi di bi ma sai sai si ze min fan di ba ma sai sa. Si ne hai ze thani min ku mi ji di bam di bam ju di ai do rangkang de pigura zaim ne de tu sai tsangang ka masai salo tu bi paulo ze ali go fan de haze ba mi masai thane bam grai de liang mai foundation ma bi haze thane folk song competition committee ne ka tam tane rangkang de ki keng de pa hai ye nu go pocket money ne ki keng de pa hai me ne tu sai wang lan na lam ra si ma dong tu ma zan thane ra anu ki haze fan khat ba nu ze tsangam hai ze kam di ka lan na kam khe tu bo ia lu ni de ding hai ye อืมสิบสายดีทุเจปามลันกาอีปิติงเทมเทงนุจารุงจุเรวปิติงเดเทมิเนสิเจมเนอ่าจุลุยกะทุบุไฮเซคอมเพติชั่นกะนัวอาท
Amit asma. Patmi zima ngau magino list ka. Eh, you proceed to the law. Okay. Just ra um kalu din hai may five juries ka kung dai kung sumra din mi ne kung kat bam kaye. Achi ramjan kan di bam madetu lo. Bam mata de. Okay, just the next next item proceed to me. The Hawaii declaration of result for male category and female category category. Just have a me have go program has see menu principle conduct you have to new board has it in super dose. Just the next item. Oh, Jimmy. Hmm. 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 Mai kau ingat ni tu dua tingkah ini cuma ning bermain, lihat juga partisipat kisah mai bermain dokumen. Welcome you all. Without taking much time, I will be declaring the result of winner who participate in the second Liang Mai Fox Song Competition organized by Liang Mai Foundation. I will be speaking in the Liang Mai. So for those who are not understand. Kindly bear with me. Results eh? <coughs> Just my come we the come high mommy. I say is a declared terrible day. Hi night. Oh, then hi for me. Today is a lot of my voice today. And I took a half of them. My key good type of the voice call on the day. A cargo with some demon. I didn't want the a long man on the. Sekiranya pawang je, hai ke dini je, atau je, kau 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 bambu, ni undi, cikau kau bambu, si buzai ke ni, ding kau kau dene. Melut ni abu liang mai, lui, kelit bu, pope, mada, fox song, si bambu tu tu hai liang mai lui ke suze ni, liang mai lui, tu je, kau kau bambu ni, kau ibu fizeng. तो है तो जन दिन क्यों में नहीं राय का तो बोला मैल कैटेगरी क्यों मिलाम दिन राय नहीं तो तो है अलियू लियांग माय है जो जस्ट माय मार्क के बुझे था ना इसको मिल जे कंपटिटिव है जे Mark the two, what the difference I pick high boga. This is a right to go. I say, cry well among the, this is a third. But some of you gonna think on a. Pew my lamps I. But up, contestant number 30, Mr. Kai Doping. Sante in which you ever. So the Pogo marks side one fifty one. The second Mr. Mano to the Jalubich, Mr. to the Rohemba, Mr. Pingdin, for the Groboga, Mangai Sang, to the Rotang Mogi, to the Tenga, the correction, Gangaya Mangai Sang. Nuri Chul Thaage. She is a Karaobuga. Contestant number 13. She is a Ping Din. 152. First prize goes to Patap Khadbupyo. Mr. Hothunbo. Sara Ngau Mak Bo Si Bulu Yes This is Kui Luang Mai Mahana One 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 Fifty Three This is the first Hai Zem Piu Milam Piu Milam Hai Zem This is 
Isihaye, is in Puimilam. Female category. Puimilam say, the Hanglam Kanga, forty nine, forty nine, contestant, forty nine. Mrs. We hun Julio New Luang Pulu one hundred forty over mark. Second wizard Haiga to Zanze he as a colo fui hai one second fui has a what's a wadden was a fui hai to them wizai ni liu sizuma Wizard Nilu. Wizard Nilu. Oh, Wizard Nilu. Wizard Nilu. Wizard Nilu. Yang. Kai Hui Nui. 141. Contestant for Sida. 56. Government. So first prize goes to We Get Who Number one there. This is what I Rainbow, Rainbow, 142. This is a result. 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 This is a Long news the Kampaibo, Isaac, Alu, Ewa had Kakalivo, Hegel, Bamraze and Alu meeting, Chimadadu, Liang Mai Hun Gane, Alu, Fox Song, to put the Kampali Misa Wima. This is Alu, go, Isaac, Hun Salatului, this is Alu, Kampali Rezaine, this is Alu, go, upgrade Kamraze in a Kambam, Zaina, Akumbudu, to Kakali, with the Bamsai Wima, this is in Kaye. This is a Isaac, Price Nokulu, my he, Nara. My the Haize, Lugama would shoot the law, then Dakum Alu, the Shiato Miss South Shubame. Sizena Yi Haize, South of Kante come the law, there's how Fugan and Moro law, there's a number of Lung Mara. Haize, Poseidon, Shimago in the Jesus, Haize Dora law, so with this Shimagome, Sine, Poseidon, Shimidi in him below. Mr. Witcham Zimbo, no long for go, for night too, Kante come the law. ได้อยู่ไฮเซ่ช่วยมาเลยคังคิวลูปาร์ติสิเปชิวคิมิไมฮีในเรื่องเดียวอลิวอลิวคิดเองเกมมาเดียวที่ใครในบ้านเมื่
just just my go there ali hai wakat ye ago suggestion kum je pikane ali hai just my thank you the pikian to fuima fai wima to boy kam ning budin kha ye ke je khang khan ne khat khat part khat part khat chu sai wima ke je dawlu bi sai ra ali go mania tim go de to mark is a aligo cultural to the preserve kambam they na minya ka thimbu ga khangkhatu to the pi thimilo to lui ka thiubu ga porwa ai peking masan bo chibudong khatu pi thimilo to the ali the main gumbo clarity gumbo ida to expert main khatu pi thimilo to the nzan khai sara ko go ma जैसे खंखा खंखा ने चिन्नों में सी गो तो तो मार्क कहे रहा हूँ जो रिजोल्ट डिक्लेयर कम साइड हुई माँ तो खंखा चीज़ ने है जो क्या अंग खंखा ने लाइन खगरा एक्सपर्ट बामा खंखा ने चीज़ जो है हम्म फिर है वो आइडल इंडियन आइडल कौन वो मात्रा है आई तो तम तम वो आह फिर है वो का चीज़ पां Ago suggestion, so the kang tu na si pikiang to pui ma ko de to kan na kat kat chin sai si the new land de spoon sin so ma si bu si the tu ho pi si kai. Mzi mzi, si sir. Hmm. Result si tu bram bram pi kai lo ma ti mai. Result is that you can go group group ga Masai Facebook ga I say publish you can learn any Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you Nam 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 network we may win a little Good news. You want me as an the door clue What I did on for network and then go the problem have a may is in a count you go there Yeah, I can now my one down no more than it's good Jadi pampau tu mahu jadi itu je, juga impau kaya. Jadi pampau tu mahu jadi nombor lima tak tahu. Eh, eh. Ya, nombor lima tak tahu. Mai bamka madin kaya dah leng. Oh, nak tak? Oh, hai. The second yang saya fokuskan kerja sensi view kumbu share kumbu gas ni mahu red. Pima, what you say? Yo, yo, view, come on, share, come on, come on, come on. The male and female go contestant number C, along, la zema, I didn't tell my dad, she didn't tell her side with me. Clip, clip, come on, say, yeah, uh, Print share to Kaidi Suye. No, print share to Kaidi Suye. Chat box to Kaidi Suye. Yes, Kaidi Suye. Contestant number to Mo. Oh, Nagu. Number. Contestant. WhatsApp to Langkai Lu. Chishra, Anu. Screenshare. WhatsApp to Langkai Lu. Yes. 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 Dinsan kara leng hamay sa tawoy raja ligo po wan sa ito. We di kumbi ju sa suiza loy da leng. Kamo mo siya, Board of Thanks na nambo ga. Board of Thanks, I say. Achi, brother, Dr. Kaila bo, dahi may panipuan lo kay milo. Kaila. Sorry. We de. Yusara aligo. Program di po wan ting katawang mi de. Program hay si... Success to the tubo ra ya few lo kaya like that program has a visa. Thing mam tadi para tubo pagin bamboo go celap celui has a pihan. Hindi ko kaya mina. Kisa to kaya liu kanam boga ina din tau kaya ni bo. Tuma sa ako tuan bolat aliu ko yung may foundation namso. Tuma sa ra liu organizing committee namso. Tisa din tau kaya lane. Rai boga aliu ko. Hai folk song competition go organizing committee. Hai saya alih uliang my foundation go banner hanggarak kamam eh. Jadi organizing committee tamsin naza bamsa kamam boy hai saya. 
Chamdin Kadi Pau Pingsila Pluna Plu team e my chin as under Kenla de Haga, Pisa Haim Duna, Kamamboy, Pluna for Bampa Bamgo, area area go mobilized to Radi, the might to entrust you Kaiser Nagalin, Manipur, Tamenglong, Tame, Tuzar, Tam Tam, Nam Nam go mobilize your lengths, might to contact you that to have the organized program has a come with come housing. So these are 20 way to Pratusa. Achi kadala to di visa thone hai jalo ki area tamme hai nagaland ka di pan mobilized chhumo chhu kai pujinga so se jinga so adu hai organizing committee dung to congratulations kadi thank you day thank you sir adu ko liang mo foundation nam subi chuja din tau kila ne ni aboga first session ka padap lo kai mim dung to thone adu ko speaker pui na di po one week jalo kai mde chala din we din kai mde Alu go yang my foundation go president view which am din na di host chum which kai mi de kyu sara urelung bo na po poetry kima sa alu ko lalu bay ha sa can we can kai bi uncle mani na di po bor thanks pi kai mi de kyu sa talk ga wang ga attend chum alu yang my kadi yang my mong my chun to di sa tuan ni kyu sa din tau kala ni Saya sumbu ga alih wo folk song go, hai wo competition go judges me dung klub liu celadi kese di din kai mie, masai mera tu jah network isu bermzing so zau zau tu masa di bame, tu di hai alih judges me kham mengiu bame, kham tu tu hai di jis tu ane hai se celui judge cura boti wo hai se melap go tengam magai, tu di peliu na peliu go peliu lung kai bermzing so peliu lung alih liang me go tradition hai se preserve cuma dau dau lagi save kat cuma dau lagi cuma lung lung cuma zat bising so hai bungam hai se lung tu zat kam hai boy hai se pelu dong pohon king kau boy bamra boy pelu zing king zah bamra boy tu pelu tu wadi pi kaya di hai tu di tu 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 macam di zat kaya minat tu se judges pun tu di tau kaya tu zat winner dong tu congratulations ni go Zau mui zau kaiza nilu go tu mui tu kaiza nilu kai prize tau pasen nilu congratulations pi kaiye seru nama za participants me dong kai bu competition ga folk song go participants zau kai me dong so di se tuane nam tam tam nam so pi wang boy represent represent tu wang boy nagaland manipur state ni aga so nam kai se pekhang na i to kai detail si kai mada tu di nam king sui lam so per kai Participants tu saya buang kaya, kaya se ngau kaya buka mai cundi gue, kadi anda jutu tuan ni itu saya tahu kalau ni, kadi perlu tu help tu kaya mai perlu assist tu kaya mai perlu video lo kaya mai upload tu kaya mai kaya organising committee naya alam zaba macam ni, buat dong tu dia jaga tuan ni. Tiu za mengiupoga alu ko Emily kadi minister awang bo niu mai manipul ko. Kadi Emily Namri Chang Naglen go hai kini tu di di se tuan ne penai go donation di se pi hai bo pen so kalu go hai competition hai se di tweet tweet lu boi tu bo se penai tu jin tau kagai penai go ministry ga success tu bo tu mino tu se jin tau kagai tu se kalu go hai bo go competition go kalu hai nai program go di tu se technical host tu se bombo Alu kama lungpu bo kadi witam sin ini tu di di jatuh ni tu jadi lungpu bo perhati tu jadi tuai di panah technical host tu jadi bermain seru nama tu alu bo competition go seluai wang bo pihak na se panah idit di kam tu lu jadi hai alu liang my foundation go YouTube channel tu di panah upload tu hai tu bermain si jeng so lungpu tu di di jatuh ni tu jadi alu second Session go host Florence tu di situ ni, ana host cuma itu kaya pun, so dia buat program hari ini gue jatuh kum de, hari apa pengsilak, na panah di, ay price distribution go result declaration go pukul, gue jah lokai jah, dun jah tu jah pegang bumbu go permission seperti kaya pun, di situ ni, tu jah perah tu tu bo, hari kung tu bo, alih go participants me dong thay nai, hai bo go. Competition go program ga close tu bukan so pung mendaipan pung mengiu kan so sudah tu hai katang tu jauh wang jauh kaya jepamai 
Niluto Diza Tone, Nalukin Lasso, Nalina Wanga Hibizin, so I do program I say, Sweet Lu Boy, Tuba say, Matil the Diza Dintau Haye, Matil the Diza Tone, the Matil Mango is a law. Thank you, Day. Thank you, Echikanda. So with this, we ended the second session of uh, Second Liang Mai Foundation Song Competition. Second Liang Mai Folk Song Competition Result Declaration Program. What you to thank you way program guys? Oh, I'm you to this a thank you way. Thank you way. Thank you day. Thank you day. Come with it. Come with it. Name sang come with it. Go mute the bami. No, thank you. They said, Dimam Tare. Chimima. Oh, Chiwa. Chimima. Mahina, the happy to go. Ni. Dimam, we came. Dimam, we came. Dimam, we came.